Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Łukasz Wawrzyk, and I'm a tooling expert at Virtus Lab. And today I want to take you for a deep dive into Bazel query. Um, so I plan to take you through a notable subset of uh, all three variants of Bazel query and wrap it up with some tooling tips. Everything will be backed by some examples, uh, which are based on the Envoy repo, which is large uh, C++ open source uh, repo, and a really tiny Scala example repo, which has four targets. Uh, so what is Bazel query? So it's, it's a powerful feature of Bazel uh, that allows you to navigate and analyze through the build graph and the build itself to understand it better, to optimize your build, and to debug some issues. And it is also a foundation for, for many tools uh, that allow you to automate or enhance your workflow. Like, for instance, this Bazel diff that selects a subset of targets that you have to run, or many IDE integrations, for example, the uh, compile command extractor that allows uh, you have proper C++ uh, editor support in VS Code, Vim, or Emacs. Uh, for example, Bazel BSP uses Bazel CQuery uh, to extract run runtime class path before running a JVM targets. So there's many of these tools uh, and countless other tools and scripts that people have in their repos on their CIs or, or machines. Uh, so let's start with Bazel query, the most plain uh, comment from, from uh, all of them. And the most uh, basic query here uh, is just querying for the target pattern. Uh, so th this query comment uh, runs right after the Bazel loading phase, so the earliest stage possible. And let's see what target patterns are. So the most simple target pattern is just the uh, exact label, and if you query for it, you get the same label back. So it's not much, but at least you can confirm that this target exists, for example. Um, and you can use wildcards, so three dots will give you all targets uh, in given package or all sub-packages. You don't even need to start in a valid package, it will just traverse recursively everything. Um, you have the all wildcard that will give you all targets in package, but non-recursively. And you have a star wildcard that will give you both targets or rules and the files. So you see the result here is uh, quite longer, and maybe we are not familiar with all of them. Mm, but we can use output formats to learn more. So the default output format is label, and it just shows plain labels. Uh, I will get through some of these output formats during the presentation, and now I want to look at the label kind output format, which additionally to label shows the, the kind of the file. So we see that we have the source file, uh, even the build file. Uh, we have our rule that we've seen in the original queries, and all the other files are generated files. So you can use this star um, to find out what rules provide to you in given target, or if you forget how to build a deploy jar, and the exact label name would be here. Uh, okay, and last from the target patterns is that you can combine three dots and a star to get all rules and files in a package and all of these sub-packages. So this is, this is sometimes useful. And also note that since I started using the star symbol, I started to use single quotes around the query. So if you're not just querying for a simple label, you probably want to use the single quotes to avoid uh, your shell from interpreting things inside and breaking your queries. Mm, okay, and um, Bazel query uh, does not have all these super capabilities like SQL for analyzing data. Uh, so you need to often post-process its results with shell or whatever tooling. So here I'm just using Bazel query to get some simple statistics to understand what 
how this repo looks like. So I'm querying for all targets and just counting the lines or querying for all packages with the output package. So I can see uh, how, how this Envoy, Envoy repo looks. And with the output label kind and more shell magic, we can see how many targets of each kind uh, exist in the repo. So we see it's mostly a C++ repo, uh, but it has some protobuf, it has some Python, uh, it even has some Rust. And yeah, you, can, you can start from them exploring uh, how each language is used or whatever. Uh, so this is what we could do without any functions. Now let's introduce some functions. They are usually used to filter results uh, in some ways, or there are some graph operations that uh, expand the results or, or work in different ways. Uh, so the first one is filtering by kind. Uh, so the first parameter is the pattern uh, that is used to filter, and second is the set of targets. So we're finding all CC library targets under Envoy here. Uh, this is quite straightforward. And next up, we want to find CC library and CC binary targets. So note that I use here this pipe symbol uh, because this pattern is actually a regular expression, uh, the, Java, uh, the Java flavor of it. Uh, but as you can see, um, down there, these two last results are probably not what we expected because uh, they just contain CC binary substring, but are not exactly this. So here's how we can see that it does not look for a full match. It just finds a substring. So the regex is unanchored here. And if you want to be precise, you usually don't care that much if you are just exploring. But if you're writing some tool, you might want to be precise. You need to craft your regex uh, better, for example, like this. And now we only get actual CC tests and CC binaries. And next function that allows you uh, to filter your results is uh, for filtering by attributes. And it has three parameters this time. So you have the attribute name, and the pattern for the attribute values, and the targets. Uh, so uh, the pattern is also a, a regex applied on, on the value of the attribute that is always turned into string in some way. And also note here that I use sort of a subquery. So I filter first by CC test kind, and then I fed this result of this query into the target's uh, parameter of attributes. So this should be intuitive, I think. And here's how I can use the same attribute function to filter for flaky tests. So just to note that mm, booleans are ones and zeros, so true or false will not match here. And if you want to match against um, arrays uh, or lists, uh, this is how they look when they are turned into string. So you need to figure out your regex if you want to match something precisely. And uh, one another thing we can do with the attribute filter uh, is we can find targets that are generated using a specific macro. Uh, so this might not be obvious for some, but you cannot use the kind filter here because the macro generates CC library kind in this case. So if you want to know how the target was generated, you need to use this special attribute called generator function and filter by it. In this case, there are just four targets generated by this macro in Envoy repo. And how to learn about this attribute? Uh, for example, you can use the output format build which is really useful. It shows uh, your target or a list of targets as if they were defined in the build file, except that macros are expanded, globes are resolved, so you see like more canonical form of your target. And you also see in green here these extra attributes. Um, you also see the location where the target was defined. Um, the select statements are maintained, like in this link static attribute. And uh, this is the continuation of the output. You even see the traceback of macros, how they were called. So this is a really good way to debug your macros. If you use uh, the variables, macro calls, and so on to understand what you ended up with. Uh, and it's just a good way to 
uh, take a peek at the target without going through the sources uh, and scrolling the files to find your target. Hmm, okay, so we have three operations on target sets in Bazel Query. We can union them, difference, and intersect. There are symbolic operators for that, which I will stick with for to fit more on the slide. Uh, but there are also keywords for this. Uh, so here I'm trying to find uh, CC binary targets that are tagged with manual under examples and tests. Um, so note that I'm here merging uh, the examples and test targets with the plus, then filter it by uh, CC binary and then filter it by tag manual. Uh, and we usually want to do the opposite, probably, so to filter for non-manual targets. So here is how we can do it. We have to repeat this query in blue, which looks for binaries, and subtract at the end of the line uh, from it the, the same query, but filtered by tags. So we get all, all binaries except these that are tagged with manual. And this uh, is quite repetitive, but luckily, we can bind variables in Bazel query. So you can use this let in syntax uh, to bind uh, these binaries to a variable and then prefix it with dollar sign and use it in two places, for example, like here. Uh, okay, next function is one of the most common functions used in, in Bazel queries is the depths. It gives you the transitive dependencies of the target or targets that you provide there. Uh, or you can specify optionally the depth, uh, which will limit the, the search depth. So believe me or not, I'm uh, querying here this just one simple target, and the output size is about 900 uh, labels here. Uh, you see the protobuf here, some Windows uh, source, even though I run it on Mac OS and even Zlib. So this all comes from, from the tool chain, from the implicit depths. And we can get rid of this with no implicit depth flag, uh, which is very useful. And now the output actually fits on the slide. So I see that I just depend on two sources, two targets, and some, some jars, because it was really a trivial repo. Uh, so you probably usually want to use this flag, unless you want to understand more about your implicit depths. Like here, we'll try to explain why this target actually depends on protobuf. We can use the sum path function, which will give you some path between two, two targets or sets of targets. And we see that from our target, we immediately jump into the Scala compiler wrapper target, which depends on the worker protocol, uh, which is used to, to talk with Bazel. And here is how we end up with protobuf in this uh, really trivial Scala repo. Uh, OK, we had some operations in graph. And now, if we want to visualize it, we can use another output format, a graph, which will output our graph in a text form, which you can later visualize with some tool, like, for example, this dot command that comes from the graphvis package. Uh, we can show it as SVG or PNG. And note that I, that I crafted my query here, so I removed implicit depths. I'm querying for depths, but only in the source uh, package. And I'm filtering it by kind, only for Scala targets and JVM import targets to see the Maven depths. Uh, so if you do not uh, know what you want to find and do not scope it down, uh, your graph will be probably useless. So uh, this is a graph of Envoy repo. So you, you cannot really uh, get much from this. Uh, okay, next filtering function called filter. Uh, it works just like grep. You can use grep instead, uh, but if you are feeding this result into another query, it might be more efficient if you use this filter. And I'm using it here to find all generated header files. Uh, so note that I use this trick with three dots and a star uh, to get all files rather than just targets and I filtered by kind generated file. So this gives me the generated files. And uh, lastly, I filter it by the suffix.h. Mm. Another important function is rdeps. So it gives you reverse dependencies. So 
whoever depends on your target, or in other words, what you might break uh, if you change your target, for example. Uh, important parameter is the, the first one, the universe. Uh, it is the set of target that Bazel will load and uh, use as a scope to look for your dependencies, because it's it's quite more complex than the standard depths, uh, which is more natural. And in this example, I'm just uh, specifying the depth as one. So I'm looking for direct depths, and it found me just two targets that directly include this this header file. Mm, and also notice that I use the keep going flag here. So in from my experience in any non-trivial repo, if you try to load everything uh, with a query, it will almost surely fail for some random reason. And it usually does not affect the results. So to, to, to not prevent yourself from getting uh, results, you should use keep going flag to let, let it continue despite some, some small errors. Uh, OK, and that was it for the standard query. Mm. Now we'll go into the C query, which is, stands for configured query. Um, everything that I showed before for a standard query works for C query. C query works uh, after the analysis phase. So the configurations, the select statements, and so on, it's all resolved. Uh, so you might get more accurate results. Also, the C query inherits all. Uh, all of the command line uh, arguments that go with the build command uh, for Bazel. Uh, so this is a really simple C query, just uh, output format build used uh, for, for one target. And I use the config windows here uh, to see how this target looks like and what, what are these uh, C++ options and so on when it's built for Windows. Uh, so it, it gives you more, more accurate results, and it's probably easier to read uh, if, if you are interested in this. And another superpower of uh, C query uh, that standard query does not have is the output mode Starlark, uh, which allows you to run a snippets of Starlark code uh, for every target in the set and print uh, its, its output. Uh, you can provide a file or inline expression here. Uh, and here's how I get the transitive runtime class path of any JVM target. Uh, so I'm extracting uh, providers from the target, taking out Java info, transitive runtime drawers from it, and I need to turn it into a list, iterate over it to extract paths, and I have the actual paths of our jars that are needed. Uh, if you want to learn more, I suggest to read the docs on how this syntax here different, uh, differs from the aspects. Uh, but it's, that it's pretty similar, but it's worth to know about the quirks. And if you want to know how to extract quite a lot of things, I recommend reading existing aspects, for example, in IntelliJ Bazel plugin or the Bazel VSP, which extracts really a lot of information to provide to the IDE. So you can learn from there, or you can also explore the API with the dear command to see what your attributes the target has, that it has actions, what attributes action has, and go from there to see what you can extract and how. Uh, OK, and just so you know, I'm just mentioning here that there is a transitions flag that allows you to debug transitions, but I'm not going to dig into this deeper. And lastly, we have a query, uh, which is not that similar as standard query and C query. It works in the world of actions and express relationship between actions and artifacts. It works uh, on the action graph, so even after the, the C query. Uh, and let's see the most uh, basic I query. I'm querying here for just one target, uh, which has two C++ sources. Um, and it will give me two actions uh, with mnemonic CPP compile, those two first actions that compile each of these files. And the last action that links these two files together. Of course, there are more actions here, but 
uh, as you can see, you have uh, the target it's linked to, you have the action key, which should change if the inputs change, you have environment, and I omitted here the command line and artifacts for simplicity, uh, but here I have them. Uh, so here, here is the full command line inputs and outputs, so it's really like a great way if you want to understand how your rules work, so you will know what kind of actions your target produces and how exactly they run it. Uh, it really helps you to debug your rules if you are author of them or just try to understand them or what is Spatial actually doing. And uh, this slide is about one of three uh, additional functions for filtering that a Basel Aquary offers, and the first of them is mnemonic. Uh, so I'm using it here to filter for only CPP compiler actions. So it's uh, given that there is really a lot of uh, different actions for, for every target, uh, filtering by it might be really useful. And two other um, filtering functions that are here are outputs and inputs, which allows you to filter the actions by output and the input file paths that they produce. Uh, so in this case, uh, I try to present it in a scenario where you're trying to find the contents of a header file. So imagine you open a file in your ID and you just cannot find uh, this header and you need to read its content to understand something. Uh, so you can naively look for this file if uh, a subpath like this exists in your repo. So if it's not found, it's probably a generated file, but maybe you didn't run full build yet or whatever. Um, so you can use the aquery here to query for outputs uh, that, that has this part of path. Uh, amongst all depths of all targets. So this, this should find you an action that generates this file. And note that I have to put this dot and star in the beginning uh, of this pattern, because unlike all other regexes so far, this one requires a full match. So this is uh, a strange quirk here. And it got us the exact uh, action, well, the general that generates the target. We have the target that we might want to build and we have the exact path to this file here. Mm, one last thing about a query, uh, there is an output format called summary, which for, among other will give you the count of uh, different uh, kinds of actions that are executed. So this is how I can query that uh, over 1,200 CPP compiles actions have to happen to uh, to run this test. Okay, and the promised tooling tips, uh, I have just a few. So the first one was already uh, mentioned, so you probably want to use keep going for robustness, especially with RDAPs or uh, aquery and sQuery. Uh, these small errors will, will usually happen, and you may want to warn the user that command would have failed. Uh, if you didn't just keep going, because it's hard to tell if this is a real error or a problem with the build definition or or, or just something that you can ignore. Uh, okay. Uh, second one is you will probably want to use the machine-friendly output formats. So the label and label kind is, is often all you need. And it's enough and it's machine-friendly, but if you need to extract more, uh, there is protobuf and the streamed version of it if you're getting a lot of output. Uh, you can see it also as JSON lines and the text version of protobuf. The standard query also has the XML output mode that I would like to highlight here. Uh, so it, it shows, it's similar to the output format build. In a way, it shows all attributes of your target, but it also has rule inputs and outputs. Uh, it might be more readable if you are used to looking at XML, uh, especially because lists are actually lists, uh, like one under another, so it might be easier to read some files like this, and of course it's, it's easy to parse. Uh, okay, uh, and just so you know, if you generate a large query, so for example, feed, 
uh, output of one query into another, you have a lot of targets, you might exceed the command says limit, uh, but you can use the query file to put the contents of the query and load it from a file. Um, and last thing, you might want to consider performance. Uh, so if you are calling many queries in a loop, like calling a query per target uh, or, or whatever like this, if you need to call many queries, it might not uh, scale well. Scale well. Uh, so you should probably prefer to call, uh, like make a bigger query calls and, and parse it outputs, its outputs or you might want to get interested into using aspects, which allows you to run a single build and dump all the information about the build graph that, that you need and process it later. This is the approach that uh, IntelliJ integration uses, for example. Uh, okay, so that's all I had for you today. And thank you. And